for having Thank us. you for driving all the way from Massachusetts, from sea to shining sea, to come see me in my house. I appreciate that. That's it. This is very cool. I'm glad to be a part of it. My name is April King. I'm class of 2004. Uh, we're in Sherman Oaks, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles, and my preferred pronouns are she, her. Well, in the past year, um, in the pandemic, um, I had a baby. Uh, my second baby, her name is Jade, um, and her arrival, um, unfortunately, tied very closely to the, the passing of my father, which led me to wanting to create some memories. Both those experiences made me realize like it was important to be able to tell my children in the future about my dad and about this time in the world when my daughter was born. So I've taken to scrapbooking, journaling, um, which is something I actually did a lot of when I was a kid and a teenager, but life happens, you get busy, and all of a sudden you just have boxes and boxes of stuff that one day you intend to put into a book. Um, and recently I've actually started putting these things into books, um, and it's, it's been great. Wow. Um, that sounds, sounds like obviously a, a beautiful project, obviously tied into a huge moment in your life, having a second, a second child in the midst of a global pandemic. And, and I'm sorry to hear about your father's passing. Um, Thank you. That obviously losing a, a parent is not the easiest thing. Um, you know, it, it reminds me actually, there's someone, I think there's a project someone has been doing um, just in general, land along around the country with black communities around collecting, having them sort of um, archive and create the scrapbooks around their family histories because there's so many things locked up everywhere like you mentioned. Um, so it's exciting actually to hear that you started scrapbooking. Has had there been any special memories as you put started kind of looking for content and you know dusting off the boxes? Any any special memory or photo that comes to mind? Well a lot of the memories come from my childhood in Jamaica. I am an immigrant. Um, I did not come to this country until I came to Williams on a student visa. Um, but I've always been in, interested in historical artifacts and memories. It's probably the reason why I was a history major in the first place at Williams. Um, so it's just in general seeing snippets of my childhood, especially as it relates to my relationship with my parents and what a good job they did when I was really young in being just super present and involved and documenting. I mean, my mom was so good. Like I have every report card, every you came third in the potato sack race in kindergarten certificate. Um, things that were probably ridiculous to say, but now I love seeing and I, it made me realize, especially as we're moving into a, a digital era where it's much easier to keep these kinds of memories and artifacts digitally that it's also important to keep some of the physical stuff so that they can look at it and touch it and, and, and bring memories back. Uh, I'm a talent agent at a company called ICM Partners, uh, which is a full service talent agency, which means we represent uh, artists and entrepreneurs across mediums film, television, theater, digital, broadcasting, books, pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, my clients are actors, so I find opportunities for them in, in film, television, theater, streaming, digital, uh, primarily in scripted, um, but I do a lot of work in unscripted, which is everything from documentaries to docuseries to reality shows, um, as well as podcasting. Wow, that's... That's, that sounds awesome, actually. I'm sure it's really a busy, busy work. Yeah, no. <laughs> so it, 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 it's, a, it's a long way of seeing. Like, I find opportunities for people in media, and it's very reflective of, of who I am. I was always kind of fascinated and interested in, in entertainment growing up. I was probably the only person in Dodd who had cable in my room. Um, you know, I, I think that Williams like people, or at least when I was, was there, it's like, oh, I don't have time to watch TV. I had lots of time to watch TV, which I did. Uh, so it's actually been pretty cool to find a career that uh, suits my interests. I get to read a lot, I get to watch a lot of content, and I make dreams come true, baby. 
<laughs> I love it. And, and what, what sort of spark or sparks along the way, if there are any brief sparks, sort of led you into this path? I'm just curious. Again, watching a lot of making the band, uh, behind the music, uh, each true Hollywood story. It doesn't sound particularly academic, but um, I, I really loved seeing um, who the people were behind the scenes making all these things happen for artists that I enjoy and respect. You know, I was somebody who liked to go out and buy CDs and the first thing I would do is flip to the end of the booklet to see who the thank yous were for. I was like, I wanna be someone that gets one of those thank yous because I helped make this, this project happen. Like, I'm not that kind of artist. Like, I can't create this work, but I respect this work. And I somehow innately knew that it took a lot of support. You need a, you need a support system to produce something like this. So that always fascinated me, and the fact that I even found out that that was a real job that was accessible uh, has been a big discovery in my young life, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I found it early. It's the first job that I got out of Williams was, was in this field, and I've always stayed here. Um, I feel really lucky about that. Well, and, and that is really important, especially as we highlight voices within our community, um, especially when we think about young alumni or students around seeing this kind of path. So we're trying to bring a mix of different ways in which people follow sometimes their linear or non-linear paths. And I mean, it's not easy making it into this space, I'm assuming, or, you know, I'm assuming you had just, was it, how did that flow? Because coming, you know, everyone sort of dreams about like the coming to LA and getting into some sort of like aspect of the entertainment industry. How, what, what were some of the difficulties in that? Well, one of the things that was not difficult is that coming out of Williams, I think I just had unbridled confidence. Like, I definitely had a sense that this was a business where having relationships helped you, and I had none of those, but it did not deter me in any way. I was just like, well, I don't have any, so I'm gonna have to just do this on my own. Um, had a couple hard knocks along the way, it's true. You really, it's best to know someone but I got into the business by writing the cover letter of my life. Um, and within days of them receiving it, I, I had an interview and, and was in. I didn't realize till much, much later that that isn't typical or um, like not a part of the regular process. But really that's what it was. I, I, wrote, I wrote a great cover letter that impressed somebody in HR and they brought me in and I've been in that business ever since. But like, yeah, unbridled but, confidence. You know, Just I, don't I, get scared. I, I can feel it as I'm talking to you here, and I've always, at least as I've known you throughout the years, it's always an aspect that I admire about you. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Don't take no. Yeah. But it's it's also helpful when you don't know that no is an option. I think you don't learn that till later in life when you're like 22 years old. Like you're like, why not? Why not? So that's how I got into the business. Why not? That means God, I feel like I have multiple communities now, especially like there's my, my Caribbean community, my, my the community of friends that I've gotten through different aspects of my education, which you know spans different countries. Growing up in Jamaica, I went to school in India for a long time before I came to Williams. My entertainment community, my immigrant community, my, my mom community. Um, but I guess the one I would highlight right now is probably the mom community. Again, we're, we're coming out of pandemic. It was a, a big part of it for me was, was being pregnant and having my baby and just navigating childcare and the relationship with my children during this time. Um, and I needed a lot of support. And the, the second time was much, much different from the first in that there were no mommy groups, there's no birthing classes, there's, there's no community to go to physically. Um, so it was a lot of texting, a lot of FaceTimes, a lot of Zooms with women I knew well, women I didn't know so well. Even women in my, my circle who don't have children but recognize that I needed support. Um, so even though those relationships kind of advanced and solidified virtually when we could not see each other, um, I think it carried me through that time. Um, and I have to big up my sisters too, uh, some of whom were moms and some who aren't, who were, who were very supportive. Again, during a time when my dad was, was pretty sick um, and understanding 
helping balance that and, and helping with his care while understanding everything I was going through. I think one of the things that I experienced at Williams that I've taken into my life is just an openness to experiencing new things and trying new things. I mean, Williams is the first place that I tried sushi. Williams is the first place that I tried to learn to ski. Um, as a freshman, I jumped on the sailing team based on one summer experience on like a boat saying, can I join your team? I don't know anything about this. Sure, sure, let's shuttle to Lake Pantusic and we'll put you in our expensive boat and hope that you do okay. <laughs> like, um, the fact that the academic program kind of forces you to at least take a few classes in a division where it may not be your, your strong suit. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this now. I'm so glad I had to take Math 100 and like a random biology class because it just taught me that I can find positive experiences in places where they're not necessarily obvious. Um, and that's something I've taken into my life, just in terms of the friends that I have, um, uh, different avenues in my career that have evolved as technology has evolved. Like I'm, I'm not afraid when I see something that I don't necessarily know or understand because I've tried other things that I don't necessarily know or understand before and it's, either worked out at least fine, but sometimes really, really great. Uh, I think that lends to confidence, it lends to life experiences. Um, for such a small community, you, there's such a wealth of experiences where you can try so many different things. And it was very formative. It was a very formative part of my life. Well, I'm a Jamaican person, so what brings me joy is warm weather, a beautiful beach, something spicy or sweet to eat, sun on your skin, and an unplanned day. I don't get many unplanned days anymore. Um, again, just being a mom, I have a, a job that I love, but it's, a, it's, a, it's not a nine to five, five kind of job. You don't get a lot of breaks. Um, so yeah, warm day, beach, drinks, my kids somewhere in the background with somebody else helping me watch them, and nothing on the schedule. That brings me joy. I have to write two thank you notes. Don't penalize me for dodging the question, but there, no, there are two people. One, I'd have to write one to my mom, um, my mother, for many years of my life, took on a single parent role, um, worked so hard to present opportunities to me and my siblings, um, forced herself to learn new things that she wasn't comfortable with so she could extend those opportunities to us and has continued to grow and shine. I mean, my mom just won the Masters Cycling Championship in Jamaica. You know, she's just redefining how you live your life in your early 60s. She's never looked better. She's never felt better. She has, her business has survived this pandemic. Um, she's awesome. And I don't think I would again have kind of this unbridled confidence and why not mentality if it was not for her. Um, and somebody else I would like to shout out is my first mentor in the business. Her name is Nicole David, um, who, you know, how, how you get up in the business is you apprentice on different desks, uh, working as people's assistants. Um, and she really took a role, not just with me, but with many women, with many people of color to teach them this business and extend their relationships and give us an opportunity to get a foot in the door where it is very difficult to do so, especially, you know, in not that recent past. Um, I don't think this would have happened without her. Um, so we love Nicole David. Yeah. Shout out to the women in your life. Shout uh, out to the women in my life. The impact they obviously have had and, and the beauty of the confidence and, and the work that you're doing uh, here. It's, it's inspiring hearing your story. And um, I hope others, especially when we think about students and young alums who are still carving their path, at least are able to see a snippet of something they can relate to um, in, in your own voice. Um, 
As we wrap up, um, are there any sort of last uh, words of advice or anything in general you'd like to share with the Williams community? Uh, last words of advice. Um, I'm trying to think of all the things going in my head. What like I have so many pieces of advice. I feel like I've learned so much in my life that I, I, I want to tell to my younger self and I'm hoping there's some younger people uh, watching this um, who might get some inspiration. I know when you leave the purple bubble, the world can just seem so big and all of a sudden you seem so small in it. And you just won't wonder why, what is gonna become of me? Um, I think because a lot of us who go to Williams are type A personalities who like to plan and like to have an end goal. All of a sudden you kind of like get thrown out into the big world and you may not have one, especially if you're not taking the path of going to grad school immediately or you're not one of those people who walked out with, I don't know, a hedge fund job or you're not going to teach for America, like you literally don't know what you're gonna do. Just a reassurance like it's gonna be fine. You are allowed to pursue many things. You are allowed to explore your passions. If you keep your spirits up, I, this, this, this sounds like, like out of a book, but it's true. Like if you just, just keep your eye on just the general prize that it's going to be okay. If you pursue the things that you like, like it's going to be all right. I'm nervous. Why? Nervous? Oh, I feel like I've done a million of these. I don't know why this one is 